Welcome to Under the Hood Podcast. In this podcast, we pop the hood and give you an inside look at the hows and whys of our ministry here at Cornerstone Church. I'm Michael Knave, your host. As I mentioned in our very first episode of Under the Hood, one of the things that first impressed me about this church called Cornerstone, way over in Marion, Illinois, was a commitment that we serve the people in our region. And today we're going to talk about how we have been working to get better and better at this so that when we help people, it actually helps. At Cornerstone, We call that empowerment. And today I am thrilled to welcome Jason Thrash to the microphone, who leads all things empowerment here at Cornerstone. Pastor Jason, thank you for joining us today. Man, I'm excited to be here. Yeah, I'm excited to talk about empowerment and what that means exactly. Oh, I see that excitement on your face anytime empowerment stuff is going on. It's really good to have you here today. Now, now how long has it been? For you and Pam and Keegan and Carson, when, when did you guys first show up at Cornerstone? Yeah, I think we first found Cornerstone somewhere uh, around 2004. Yes. Um, we had been in a church in West Frankfurt and just started looking for something new and different and found out about uh, a church that was maybe going to be planting in West Frankfurt. And uh-huh. so we visited Cornerstone in Marion over on at the old Bainbridge uh, facility. Right. And found about this small group that was meeting, uh-huh. was going to be planting in West Frankfurt, and quickly <laughs> became plugged in. And yeah, and so um, 18 it, years. A long time. And now, now Keegan's married and Carson's at college. Oh my goodness, they were just little people back then. And so, so then when did you come on staff at Cornerstone? Yeah, I came on staff um, somewhere May of 14, I believe. Okay. Um, I had served, uh, I don't know, five or six years as elder before that, and I yes. just knew that there was something more to it. And you and I spent some time on Mm -hmm. a lift in this building that we're in right now, putting ceiling tiles in (laughs) and painting walls and kept talking more and more about that. And, and pretty soon it led to, I don't know exactly what this looks like, but I'm ready to dive in. Oh, and so glad you did. My goodness, your ninth year here on our team. Yeah. What a beautiful thing. Okay. So let's jump into the conversation empowerment. So when, when we use the term empowerment, like what, what, what does that mean at Cornerstone? So uh, you probably or may have heard of someone talk about benevolence. Mm-hmm. And so when when someone comes to Cornerstone Church and they're looking for assistance, maybe financial assistance, maybe housing assistance, or they're just in a bad place and not sure how to get to the next spot. Um, that's what we're talking about. And okay. so we we don't we've we've gone away from benevolence and, and like to talk about empowerment and help trying to help them help themselves get to that better place. Okay. Now, now you say help them help themselves. This is not one of those, you got to get your life straightened up before you come to Jesus. This is, we really want to partner with you on this new journey. Now, now back when you and your team were beginning to form what we now call empowerment, you read this book called When Helping Hurts. Can you, can you tell us kind of the foundations of what you guys learned from that? Yeah. So when, when helping hurts, um, it really is the model around what we do with empowerment. Um, and it's just the whole principle that it's not always the handout that they need. It's not always yeah. the dollar or uh, an, one more night in a hotel it, that they need. Um, they really need um, education. Mm. Um, one of the one of the big principles in the book is talking about poverty. And okay. most people think of poverty as a financial situation. Mm-hmm. And we would say poverty is the result of broken relationships. Um those relationships, there's four relationships that we focus on, and that's the relationship with God, the relationship with self, the relationship with others, and the relationship with creation. Yeah. And so we dive in to all of those. And for most of them, um, it's a something brand new that they've never focused on. Mm-hmm. Um, but we reveal a lot of things really quickly about maybe why it is they are where they are and then how we help them get out of those ruts that they're in. Oh, yeah. That is, that is so good. It's it's not just, um, hey, provide that one more night at a hotel, give them something. It's come alongside and help them take that next step in their relationship with God, in in, in that broken relationship they've had with themselves or, or with creation. So, um, so kind of take us through, like, 
what, what does that normal process look like? You know, somebody asks for assistance. How, how does that start or what, what does the empowerment team process look like? Yeah, so my team um, is made up of what we call navigators. The, okay. the biggest part of the team is navigators. And someone that is a navigator is basically just someone that's willing to sit down with an individual or a family. Um, and um, David, one of our navigators yesterday, uh, I was talking to him. He said, it's really, I just have discovered that it's mostly just about being present. Like Ooh. just being present and being willing to listen yes. to what's going on. And so um, the navigator will sit down with an individual and we go through a, an application process. Um, they they start with some really simple um, budget, like tell me, show me where your money is going. Okay. And let's see if we can figure out where it's going so that then we can tell it where it needs to go. Um, so we do, we talk about budgeting, we talk about housing, we talk about work, we talk about like what resources do you have that maybe you haven't been tapping into? Mm -hmm. What are some skills you have? What are some, what are the things you love to do? Um, and maybe we can figure out how to make those things turn into a financial resource for you. Mm -hmm. Um, cause a lot of the, a lot of the folks that come through the door looking for help, it really is a financial situation that they think that they are in. Um, and then we try to figure out, okay, how do we best help that? that situation out. So navigators meet with them. We build a plan. And then we have a, a, a crazy amount of partners that we partner with in the region. Yes. Um, places like the Homeless Coalition, places like Centerstone, Mantracon, the local shelters, Salvation Army, the Minister Alliance. And so we have a great connection with those folks. And we know that we can't do it all. Like we can't do everything well. And so we do the things that we do and then we partner with them and let them do the things that they do. And so that navigator is just there to help them make those connections. Um, what I found really early is that someone can come in looking for help and I can give them a list of things to go do. Okay. But when they walk out the door, all they're really worried about is how they're going to feed their kid that night or yeah. where they're going to sleep that night. And they, they forget about, yeah, he said, go to this place and, right. and work, work on your job application and then go to this place. And this is mm -hmm. how you get your ID. And so the navigator is going to help them with that process. Oh, so, so good. So good. I, I really appreciate um, your vision for partnering with these other organizations and agencies. I love your humility and your team's humility that it doesn't have to be a cornerstone thing to get it done. And we've seen that reciprocally in that our, our city partnered with us and, and said, hey, what, what you are doing with our empowerment team over there at Cornerstone in meeting the needs of emergency housing is so helpful that the city didn't have to do their own thing. And we get to, in the same way, partner with awesome agencies. You mentioned some of them that are doing great things. We don't have to create our own, our own process. We can have navigators who know what those organizations and agencies are offering and then walk with them. Now, that sounds exhausting. Like being a navigator has to be messy, has to be time consuming. Uh, I, I know there have been some heartbreak stories where we've seen somebody take a few steps forward and then take three back. Um, can you can you give us a success story? Like give us a taste. Maybe maybe one of, one of our people today are saying, "Huh, I might be a navigator, but ooh, wow, I don't know. Is is it worth it?" Can you can you tell us maybe a little success story? Yeah, I, I don't want to gloss it over because it definitely is. It's tough. It's difficult yeah. because that when they come in the doors, a lot of them really are broken and they have several things in their past that have put them where they are. Um, but, yeah, we've got so many um, really fun stories. Um, one of them. Um, so I've got two. One of them. We had a um, I think she was 74 years old. She had been on the street mm. for a year when we met her. Um, we put her in uh, one of our tiny houses. So we we have three tiny houses on the property and we put her in one of the tiny houses. We hooked her up with one of our navigators. And um, I think she was with us about three months. And um, she has now been in her own apartment for over a year oh, and good. just doing really well. She um, one of the first things th they had been meeting for about a month and she asked if she could have a Bible. And then mm. she asked if she could have audio Bible because she was having a hard time reading. Yes. So we've just kind of helped walk alongside of her. And, um, and now she's, she's on her own doing her own thing in an apartment. So yes. that's, that's been a really neat situation. And then, uh, currently we have a, a gentleman, his name is Joel. Uh, he's been with us about nine months and Joel has been in the 
process of trying to get on disability. Mm-hmm. Um, he legitimately needs to be on some sort of disability. Okay. Um, he has just some situations where he just can't physically be on his feet very long at all. Um, and so we've been in the in the middle of that process. It can take six, nine, sometimes 18 months to get your disability coming. And so we've been walking alongside him and he just found out uh, about a week ago that he is going to be placed in um, the Phoenix Project, which is a, a facility that the um, Homeless Coalition has put together. It's over in Heron. And he has the opportunity to move into a one bedroom apartment mm. called the Phoenix Project. Yeah. And it's just an amazing thing. So he's been on our form of emergency housing, the tiny house. And now he's moving into more of a temporary facility yeah. that he can just be there. And so we're still trying to get the disability going. Um, and I think that that's going to end up happening, too. Oh, what what great examples. And and, and I, I remember another one from a few years ago where where we had a gentleman who had, if I remember right, thousands of dollars of benefits sitting there. He just couldn't get access. And you walked with him to get that. Just some really neat stories of ways you have been. Yeah, powered. we've had two situations where guys have had all this money in the bank. Mm. They can't get to it because they don't have an ID. OK. And they they just didn't know the process to go get the ID. Right. One of them, within about 20 minutes, we had his ID. Uh, we had him at the bank. He's withdrawn money, and he's paying for his own hotel room. Oh. He's no longer on the street. Um, the other guy had been robbed on a train and lost everything, and so we had it took a longer process to get his birth certificate from Arkansas, and then we got his ID. Right. And, but anyway, um, it all ended up working out. Empowerment. Yeah, oh, empowerment. so good. Now, now, you mentioned our tiny houses. When people think empowerment, they, they, they probably think of, Wait a minute. What about the car giveaways? And what about these tiny houses? So, so go go ahead and give us a, a, a snapshot of what is it we're doing and, and maybe even some numbers like nights we've put people up here at the facility in our tiny houses. So, so tell us about those two. Yeah. So we um, as far as housing goes, I kind of have a, a three tier model with housing. I think we in Marion specifically, we have. Uh, we have a need for emergency housing, something okay. that's like right now. Right. We have a, a need for some temporary housing for someone that can get into that's just now getting a job, but not quite ready to to maybe purchase a home. Mm-hmm. And then permanent housing, like affordable permanent housing that someone that's that's making minimum wage um, can actually purchase a home. And right. so we're working with both of those and or all three of those. And the tiny houses is just part of that. Um, and so, yeah, we we put tiny houses on our property about two years ago. Um, we went to Marion City Council and said, hey, we know that there's not even a provision to have right. tiny houses in Marion. But um, the mayor, mayor after came to us and said, hey, we've got a problem. Can you help us? And so yes. we came up with an idea for tiny yes. houses. And um, it's worked out just really neat. We've had 17 individuals uh, okay. in the tiny houses. They have been pretty well 100 percent occupied, we have all three of them, wow. um, from about two months into the project and, and they've just stayed full. Um, and so it's been a, a fun time to be able to walk alongside those individuals. Not all of them have been successful. Mm-hmm. Um, there's been a few that we've had to ask to leave because they just weren't willing to kind of yeah. follow some of the direction that we had. Um, and then, and then we also have, yeah, this amazing ministry with our Cornerstone Garage. Uh, Cornerstone Garage started with just a bunch of guys that wanted to work on vehicles mm-hmm. and, and hopefully bring in some young men that, wanted to work on vehicles, right. but didn't have the ability or didn't have the tools. And um, all of a sudden, one day we had a, a family come and say, hey, we have a car that we don't really need anymore. Would you guys want it? And we're like, sure. So yes. we took this car and we did some work on it and we uh, gave it away to a single mom that was having problems getting back and forth to work. And and so that has turned into 28 vehicles mm. donated to Cornerstone Church. Yes. And 19 of those that we have put back together yes. and given back out to families in South Illinois. So just crazy. Like, yes. I, I just can't even believe that the generosity of people and then the ability for us to be able to bless a family with a car that allows them to get to work, to make an income, to be able to provide for their family, um, to get their parents to doctor's visits, to get their kids to back and forth to school. Mm-hmm. Just the simple things that we take that take for granted um, that for someone that doesn't have a vehicle, it's a big deal. Oh, yes. So good. What what an incredible celebration. Jason, thank you for your commitment and passion for helping people. And thank you for your diligence to make sure that when we are helping people, it's actually helping them on this journey that God has for them, that it is truly empowering. How uh, 
how inspiring, you know, for me to to sit here and listen to what you are leading our team to do and what God is doing through you and our navigators. Um, and and I I would simply say to to all of you who are listening, uh, if God is stirring in your spirit to be part of that please reach out to Jason. He'd love to talk about you getting prepared to be a navigator. Uh, He'd love to talk to you about a resource, maybe like a car that you have available that we can take and turn it, prepare it to be used as a tool that people can discover more and more of what God has for them. Even even if you don't feel like you can be a navigator, I still have the ability for you to be a resource for us. Yes. Um, We have a, we have an eye doctor that has said, I'll do free visits for those people that are in your tiny houses. Okay. I've had people that have volunteered and given out haircuts. Um, One of my guys yesterday met with someone who's trying to get his uh, disability benefits and he works in that office. Like, so he just, he Mm. bought his computer and he did it right here Mm -hmm. um, in our office and in, in our, in our building. Um, so maybe you're not a navigator, but maybe you're a resource that we could use yes. um, in our on our team. Oh, thank you for that, Jason. That 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 makes it even more uh, attainable. It's like, oh, okay. I think I see a way I can be involved. Jason, thanks for joining us today. Thank you for your ministry. You are a blessing, and it is so beautiful to see how God is blessing people through you and what you do.